and you're in the diaconate formation program right now and you're four years into it how did that get started oh that's that's the best question okay so this this was a second call the first call i got to to consider becoming a deacon happened when i was in new orleans it makes sense right i was public you know it was everyone knew who i was you were on that radio show radio show Uh so one one deacon uh, deacon lewis uh, came to me and said carlos you should consider doing this let me tell you something, Woody. I I was I was ready to be a deacon. I wanted to be a deacon. Uh-huh. I would have loved to be a deacon. And they told me no. Really? And they told me no because at that at that time <clears throat> I had a working visa. Okay. And and which was meant to be for a period of time. And the the diocese said, you may move. So we don't think that you have that commitment to complete the program. Uh-huh. So until you have more permanent residency and things like that, then, then we could consider that. Then 10 years or something after that, um, Juan Palomares, who was also in the formation here, uh, told me, um, I told Father that that, um, that you wanted to be an, an acolyte. So we made an appointment, so you're going to talk to Father that to become an acolyte. Uh-huh. So I came here, ready to talk to Father that about becoming an acolyte. So when I sit, sit, sat down and I talked to Father that he said, okay, Carlos, I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, thrilled that you are considering to become a deacon. <laughs> Sorry, Father that maybe it's another Carlos. Uh, this is Carlos Hernandez for the acolyte discussion, not, not the, de- de- the deacon. And I want you to consider to become a deacon. So Juan and Father that had talked about me considering to become a deacon. Now, what is the difference? I didn't want to be a deacon. Really? I was too busy. Oh. I was, you know, in so many different ministries and activities here in San Faustina, helping. I, I was traveling. Uh-huh. I was not ready for that. That's the difference of God's call. So the first one I wanted, it was all about me when it was in New Orleans. Yes. The second one I didn't. And I know that the Lord knew that, of course, right? <laughs> he said, okay, now it's all about me not about you. So I talked to my wife, thinking that she's going to say, you are crazy. Uh You cannot take anything else. Of course, no. So when I talked to my wife, she said, who are we to say no to the Lord? Uh Uh-huh. So I said, yes. Because you said you're you're busy with a lot of the ministries and then you've you've got a kid in elementary school and elementary is very busy. What ministries... Are you involved in here? I was healing ministry uh, and I was doing Unbound here. There's also part of the healing ministry. Okay. Um, I was, you know, uh, we had a a group of prayer here for men. It was called Real Connection that I I am leading or was leading still active Uh in San Faustina. We we started with the females version, so the spouses of the Real Connection. So Rudy, plus I travel, as I mentioned to you, a lot. And a lot meaning all over the world. For work. For okay. work. Uh-huh. So all the way to Singapore and Brunei to here in America. Um, so I said, every single day I had something, either a meeting with my group of prayers or the healing ministry or unbound or, or rosary. I, I had no day available. Uh-huh. So I said, I cannot take anything else. <laughs> but again, that's when you realize it is God's call, and he will take care of that. So we said yes, and from that moment, it was a journey for me to become Martha and not Mary. Mm. I was so busy serving the Lord that I didn't have time for the Lord. And the Lord was telling me, slow down, drop everything you're doing, and sit next to me. I want you here. I was not listening. (laughs) <laughs> and he found a way to make it happen. So in the first two years of formation, which is called discerning, that's uh-huh. a discerning period. You are discerning if it is the call. And of course, the formation team is discerning if it uh-huh. is a real call. Yes. They asked me and talked to Father that said, Carlos need to drop all the things that he's doing and focus on the formation. The problem, Rudy, or the challenge is I have a young family. Uh huh. Friday is the day after a busy week, that you would do things together. Yes. I didn't have time for them. 
it may sound uh, drastic or it may sound uh, amazing, but when I drop all the things I was doing, and now together with the pandemic, which means that I'm working from home, I ended a Tuesday at 7 p.m. watching TV with my daughter and my wife and saying to myself, I really enjoy this. Uh huh. I don't think I've been doing this that often. Spending quality time with your family. I had no time. And I'm not saying that I'm proud about that. Uh huh. I was too busy serving the Lord that I, he didn't have time for the Lord. And the Lord is asking me, your first ministry is at home. Yes. Is to be a husband, is to be a dad. Anything else will wait. So I had to learn the hard way. You were spread too thin. That's what it was. Thin. Yeah. And, and the problem is that the temptation is going to be there to make you feel you're doing great. Uh-huh. <laughs> you're helping a lot of people. Yes. Keep doing that because you're a star and you will believe that. I believe that. And then it was through the formation that, by the way, I thought, oh, this is going to be the end. If you add the formation on top of everything else that I'm doing, uh-huh. this is going to be really bad for my family. Oh, it was the opposite. Because really? it was the Lord in charge. He was going to take care of everything and make sure that your first ministry was going to be intact. So once this diaconate formation came in, it, it really helped a lot. Really helped a lot. You weren't spread as thin as... I was yeah. not spread as thin. <laughs> Actually, I now had the, all the support to really say no to many initiatives and say, the formation is my priority right now. Uh-huh. I keep, you know, being active as much as I can, right? Yes. I keep doing and bound here and there. Uh-huh. But for example, I, in, in, in my work, I work every other Friday off. So it's what they call 980. You work nine days and you accumulate 80 hours. Yes. Well, that Friday off, I never had it off because I was always booked a session or booked a talk with someone, booked, you know, helping people. Yes. Instead of spending that Friday off with my wife, for example, uh-huh. having lunch with her. Strengthening your marriage. Yes. So, but, but thanks be to God, you know, I, I learned the lesson. He taught me the lesson and he gave me a wonderful op- opportunity to learn that lesson, right? Uh-huh. You know, in, in information to become a deacon, to be able to help, but at the same time, healing, if I can use that word, my marriage, uh-huh. strengthening my marriage and making sure that together we are strong as ever. And, and I can tell you this, Rudy, and I was talking to my wife the other day because we have to attend uh, Saturday's formation together. We've never been so close and, and so good as, as a couple, uh, you know, as we've been after we started with the diaconate. So I'm, gr- I'm forever grateful. That's, that's very similar to what Deacon Ray said when he, when he came in, how it strengthened his marriage. Yes. 